What's going on you guys? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, I'm on my way home from work actually right now, but I wanted to go ahead and shoot uh, kind of a semi-short video. Um, a couple of you have commented asking what is on my phone uh, that I kind of briefly showed there um, when I did my exhaust video. And I apologize if this is kind of like off-center or hard to see or anything like that because I'm using my action camera uh, to record, you know, what's on my phone. So I can't really see what's going on. It's a Sony action camera and it doesn't have a screen on it. Uh, normally I would pair it with my phone to see uh, what the camera is seeing. So what this is, is this is the Torque Pro app. Um, what this does is it basically can use an OBD uh, Bluetooth adapter and what it'll do is it'll read the information that your ECU is seeing uh, as far as your engine's performance or parameters or what have you. Uh, it can actually do a lot of cool things. It can also data log. Um, it can uh, GPS map uh, recent runs that you've done. Uh, like if you want to GPS like a track, if you went to a track or something like that and you kind of want to put a GPS uh, layout of the track, you can do that and it'll actually show you uh, at certain points on that GPS display, you know, how fast you were going uh, and stuff like that. It can, it can do a lot. It's actually really cool. And the app only costs $5 to own it. Um, yes, you do have to actually own the app to access all the features. There is a free version, uh, but you can't really do much with it. So when I'm just driving around, what I basically like to do is uh, leave it in this uh, screen right here. And what this has is it has my uh, my timing advance and my uh, timing retard values up there at the top left. I've got my air intake temperature over here, which is currently 73.4. Uh, in the middle left, I have my air fuel ratio. And to the right of that, I have my boost slash vacuum. And down there in the left bottom, I have my coolant temperature. And to the right of it, I have my transmission temperature. So that's basically what I prefer to monitor on a daily basis while I'm driving around. Um, it's also what I keep an eye on uh, when I'm at the track and everything. These are really important values, you know. You want to make sure that you're not getting any knock uh, up there in the uh, timing section, uh, especially at wide open throttle. Now, my car specifically in sport mode when it's doing those pops and bangs, it will pull timing when I let go of the throttle like I'll demonstrate right now. So if you can see that, it went to like negative 13.5. That's actually how the car creates those pops and crackles. Um, what that's doing is it's retarding the timing, so not all of the fuel can be 100% burned. Uh, so excess fuel will escape out the exhaust valves and basically ignite in the exhaust system, causing you to have those pops and burbles or flames, uh, so on, things like that. Um, I like to have my intake air temperature up there at the track especially so I know uh, if I'm running really hot, I can see, you know, if I'm at the drag strip, I can see what temperature I'm about to launch at. Um, that helps me know that I'm probably going to get like a crappy launch because the power is not going to be quite right um, or so on and you'll see that drop as you drive around. Uh, as you can see, it's actually dropped down to 66.2 since I'm moving now. And then over here we have our air fuel ratio. Uh, that's very important as well. You want to make sure you're not running too rich or too lean. Mine usually during a wide open throttle pull uh, will run right around 11, 7, 11, 8. Uh, sometimes it'll tap just a little bit on the rich side just for a brief moment, uh, usually when I first go wide open throttle. Uh, but other than that, it stays pretty good. Um, it shows you, and all of these actually will log your highest and lowest values, and that's what I have mine doing here. So. You can see my max boost, uh, since I've had this running right now, is 1.6. I'm going to go ahead, take it to third gear, and open it up, and you guys can see how this works exactly. So as you can see there, I got like a little digital bar, per se, that goes around that top part. Um, hopefully you can kind of see the AFR doing its thing too. I got to a 12.0 flat AFR. I was spinning a little bit, um, which is probably why it didn't really hit the target AFR all that great. Um, but I did hit uh, 22 and a half pounds. It's probably closer to 23 actually. Um, one of the reasons that I can't really see 23 is the map sensor. It's output to the ECU maxes at 22 and a half. Um, it's not what it's fully capable of, but it's what it's like 
maximum allowed to read to back to the ECU. So I can't really see anything past 22 and a half PSI, but I'm tuned for like 23, uh, anywhere between 23 and 24 PSI on this map. Um, and then down here, the coolant temperatures will usually drop uh, while you're driving around. You want to make sure you're not running too hot. And then also the transmission temperature, since I have an automatic, I like to keep an eye on that just to make sure uh, at the track, like when I'm loading up the torque converter to do my launches and stuff, I'm not putting too much stress and too much heat on that. So I like to monitor that as well. Um, if I slide over, I only have two of these set up right now. Uh, there's a bunch more for uh, different settings and all types of stuff that you want to take a look at if you like. Um, right now I have 40 to 60 miles per hour set up. Uh, what that does is it's just timing how long it takes to get from 40 to 60. It was just kind of a curious thing that I wanted to take a look at after uh, a friend of mine in his GTI did it and he said he was getting like one and a half seconds or something like that from 40 to 60. Right now I'm kind of getting uh, consistent averages of about 1.95 myself, 40 to 60. Um, and then you have your 0 to 60 down here, which my best 0 to 60 that I've actually used um, this tool to time was on the street and it was like 5.57 uh, or something like that or maybe 5.47 I can't remember um, but it was like five and a half seconds total because it'll give you like the the rounded up number as well so this is kind of you know some of the cool things that this thing can do and you can go back uh, to the main area right here and uh, you can look at fault codes you can look at a map view uh, you can run tests and then there's uh, graphings down here and then there's other settings and whatnot that you can use to set up your OBD, uh, OBD2 reader. Now over here back at the, uh, the main uh, you know gauge page so to speak um, if I want to add a gauge um, I can make these actually uh, a plethora of sizes. Um, there's like tiny, small, medium, large, extra large, and so on. Um, and you can make them whatever you want as long as your OBD uh, reader can read that parameter. And I'm gonna show you in a second when I pull into this parking lot what I mean. Um, so just give me a brief second. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about um, with these gauges that you can kind of set up whatever you want to look at. So I'm gonna go, you got a bunch of pages down here that you can go through. I think you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pages. Uh, total that you can have here. Um, so if I hold down on a page, I can hit add display, and then I can choose what kind of display, and there's a ton in here. I mean, you'd have to download the app and take a look at them, but I mean, there's a there's a bunch of different kinds of displays in here. Um, so I can select, like, say, half dial meter. That's what I have on most of mine right now. So I can go through here, and I can go, like, you know, 0 to 100 kilometers, 0 to 100 miles an hour, and so on just take a quick look there and as I scroll through uh, these ones that are lit up in green uh, like the bright green these are the ones that my uh, OBD2 is actually available to read back um, so I got like absolute throttle position um, acceleration sensor axis and all types of other stuff there's my air fuel ratio which is that's the commanded ratio and this one's the measured ratio. The one that I always put on is the measured ratio because um, that's really what you ultimately want to view. Now on some cars that don't come with a, uh, that aren't wideband from the factory per se for their fueling, you're not going to get a really good reading off of that because you are in a narrow band which is going to like jump around a lot and it's not going to be very consistent. Um, but fortunately, a Mini Coopers, they are uh, wideband from the factory. I think a lot of European cars are, and maybe even just new cars in general now. Um, so I'm able to get a nice, good uh, wideband AFR without having, having to actually install a wideband, um, which I've done before. It can be kind of a pain in the ass. You can even look at your Android battery device level, you know, make a gauge for that. Um, you've got barometric pressures, uh, fuel... All types of stuff in here engine coolant engine load engine rpm so on and so forth um let's just choose like a random one and i'll delete it later um let's just choose like air intake temperature now, this is what i was talking about with the sizes so you have tiny small medium large larger and extra large so minor medium on my main page so i can hit medium and there's my gauge right here now if you hold down on a gauge you can bring up another sub menu and you can post what you're you know 
what you have on your page right now on the Facebook. You can zoom the display. You can make it float. Um, there's display configuration. There's reset the record in maximum times. You can add another display, move this display, bring to the front, uh, send to the back, or delete. So if you go into display configuration, what you can do is you can actually change your tile type. Um, oh, hang on, let me get back in there. You can change the tile type. You can uh, set your maximum value. So what it'll actually do is it'll kind of give you... Uh, you can change you know, how high that gauge can read. So if it... If it pops up naturally at like 30 PSI or something for boost, I think you can you can increase that and make it go up to like 40 or 50 or whatever. Um, then you have your set your high warning and your low warning, so that's kind of good for uh, to make sure you're not over boosting. And then you also have um, set a low warning, um, and these can work really good for you with uh, say air fuel ratio or any kind of temperature. Then you have change your display type, which just lets you change. Um, the layout of it and then change size so you can edit them even after they're there uh, you don't have to delete them and make them go away and then do it all over again so that was just uh, kind of my brief overview of the Torque Pro app um, I hope this was useful and if you're not a subscriber please go ahead and subscribe uh, leave a comment and a like if you would on the video um, that would really help me out and then also um, you can feel free to share this video uh, on forums or Facebook or whatever uh, if there's other people asking around about this kind of thing, this has been around for a little while now, but it has improved over the last few years. Um, but yeah, this is just my brief overview of the Torque Pro app. It's five dollars. Uh, me personally, I have that Carista OBD2 reader. Um, it cost me thirty-five dollars, but it also allows me to do short coding programming on my car uh, to change certain things like turn off my daytime running lights or my automatic windows with my key fob and stuff like that. Um, that was only thirty-five dollars, and they work with. Uh, a lot of European vehicles so definitely check out that reader it's compatible and uh, you guys have a good one and I'll see you in the next video I